And we have a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, to witness, uh, you know, President Xi and what he's about and what he's doing. But his start is an excellent start. Uh, he's provided enormous leadership within the country. Uh, he has surrounded himself with very strong people. Uh, and, and he understands uh, that this isn't a one country silo, uh, and that he's part of a global uh, environment, uh, a worldwide environment. And China's leadership, uh, which is important here uh, domestically, is also important uh, around the world. Uh, again, China uh, okay, is a very large, powerful uh, uh, economy. It's the second largest economy uh, in the world. Uh, and, and so from a leadership standpoint, uh, the president uh, understands what reform is about, what change is about, what transformation is about. Uh, and he's putting a lot of things in place trying to do it. So I would give him as a start, you know, you know extremely high marks, uh, you know, for uh, and the aggressiveness with which he is going about uh, bringing about change uh, on that part. In the three decades of reform and opening up, uh, China became the second largest economy. Uh, and uh, last uh, two years, there has been a decline in the growth rates. Uh, and the GDP declined from 10 percent, 10.8 percent, to about 7.4 percent last year. Um, so, so President Xi Jinping today has new problems. Uh, during his visit to Henan uh, last uh, in 2013, he mentioned about the new normal that China is entering into, that is, low GDP growth rates relatively low because the 7% is still uh, high, very high growth rate across the globe when uh, United States is growing at 2% or even less, uh, when Japan is growing uh, even less growth rates. Uh, other developed countries are growing at a very less growth rate. Still, China's 7.4% is a huge growth rate. I think, again, it's very positive. I think that it is not only a continuation of something that was already being brewed and what's coming up um, at the right moment when the economy is slowing down. It, the economy is moving for what I think are unsustainable rates of growth, very high rates of growth that were unsustainable not only for China but for the rest of the world. They were good. They provided an incredible boost to the global economy. But an economy growing at 7% 8%. It's a more normal economy now for the levels of income and, income and development of China. But that economy required the kind of reforms that now President Xi has undertaken. I think uh, that it is very wise and, and right to slow down with the growth. There is no endless and unlimited growth. So uh, we in Europe talk about uh, smart growth. That means that uh, you need some kind of growth but not too rapid because society cannot follow this rapid growth and the environment will be damaged and we, you will not get such big uh, advantages like you want. So, so his policy is totally right. We work for a better world where businesses actually take more responsibility and produce more sustain sustainably. And I think President Xi Jinping's policy of the new normal is a great contribution to that because it is for the first time since many, many decades that a politician says, well, let's have lower growth, uh, but think of the quality of growth rather than just the figure in itself. Um, yes, if uh, it continued to grow at 7.5% a year or um, even 7 uh, well, uh, just mathematically, uh, China would be uh, consuming uh, more of its um, own uh, natural resources uh, according to the old model of extensive development, uh, low-cost manufacturing, exports. Uh, and uh, what China really needs to do is move towards a higher quality uh, growth, domestic demand, services uh, for the Chinese people themselves. 
in things like healthcare, modern financial um, services, uh, education, and that's what uh, President Xi is um, doing. So if you get higher quality growth at 6.8 percent, uh, rather than low quality growth uh, at seven, uh, that's really good uh, for the Chinese uh, people. Uh, and um, there's enough new engines of growth in the global economy. And I guess in every society there are vested interests that, that, that need to um, be taken into account, but they will try and resist. And it's obviously important that China has that leadership in order to achieve those reforms.